Still coming up today, raiders of lost art for grandmothers to grandmothers, kittens, 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 and one of our favorite episodes of Clock. This pair of shoes was actually worn by Lauren Bacall. They were a part of her wardrobe, and I don't think her feet were very small, but they were very long, and that tells me that Lauren Bacall was probably a very tall person. By the 1950s, heels on shoes were becoming narrower and taller, and there was even a bit of a trend of heelish shoes, and those things look very, very odd indeed. I don't know how people went walking. They certainly weren't walking their dogs. Samoyeds, Samoyeds, Sammies. It's a constant argument about how the name is pronounced. It's a Russian word. They're named after the tribe of people that bred the breed. They came to the Western world as the result of the polar explorations at the turn of the century. Um, they were a breed that the explorers chose partly because they were easy to get along with. They get along well with one another. They're not easily trained, but they love doing weight pull work, sledding work. They were actually originally used to herd, herd reindeer. Um, and the explorers found the breed and used them to go to the South Pole. They were the breed that Nansen and Freehold and the others that went to the South Pole. Most of those dogs didn't survive, but a few of them did. And they founded the breed. They came to England. The English fell in love with them. And so the breed has only been in the Western world since the early 1900s, but has at least a thousand years of history. It's one of the 14 oldest breeds in the world. They are one of the best companion breeds. I'm a little biased, but one of the best companion breeds around, I believe. They love to be with people. And if you don't pay attention to them, then what happens is they will find somebody else and they'll dig, they'll bark, they'll do anything they can to get attention. There really is no bad home for a Samoyed. They live well in apartments. They live well with children. They live well in, on an acreage as long as it's fenced. The only bad home is a home that doesn't pay attention. Their wool is just amazing stuff. It's a wool, not a hair. You can comb it out and spin it, actually. I have sweaters and a scarf. They're very warm. <laughs> They're called the smiling breed. They have such a sense of humor. They love to entertain you. And they're just so joyful about life in general. You can't have a bad day when you come home to a Samoyed. Go interactive with Kate. We're here in the hallways of Nanaimo District Secondary School having a look at some old class photos. This is a class of 65 and there's a woman right there she is. And here she is. This is Gay and this is Derek. And they both graduated from this very school 50 years ago. And this is the first time you guys have seen each other in 50, 50 years. years. 50 okay, years. let's have Great a morning. Let's go a little flashback and have a look in the yearbook and tell me what your write up says. Well, there I am. And basically, my favorite saying was, yes, well. Uh, my favorite pastime was breathing, still is. <laughs> uh, I was noted for my speed, not so much now. And my probable destination was subterra, which since I studied Latin here means I'd be underground and I suspect that'll be true. Unavoidable and, really, isn't and it? And <laughs> my ambition was to die with my seatbelt on and this was before the era of seatbelts. Oh, okay, you were, you, were, you were ahead of your time. Where's your photo, Gay? I'm here uh, working for BC Ferries. That was my, where I spent all my time, gone to school, noted for crazy jokes. Okay. They've, they have run the gamut, I guess, <laughs> pretty much done with those, but lots of fun. What no, was it like stepping ago. into this hallway and into this school today? Does, does it take you right back to the days when you were a student here? Well, it does for me, but I also taught here, so it's uh, not a, uh, not a lot of memories here from many years, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's almost like a second home. What was and life back then like? I, I remember it as well, and I, it, it looks amazing. I am really surprised it looks so great. It was, um, 
I remember the day they announced that we had lost JFK sitting in that very cafeteria. I remember that very and well too. And we had the, uh, the school just basically went in lockdown as a sign of respect and memorial. That was a very, sig just looking at that room now gives me the, so lots of Vietnam was heavy on our hearts at that time. Now we're here hanging out, not for a completely random reason, although maybe you don't need a concrete reason to sort of have a look back at parts of your life that were 50 years ago. You're having a reunion. Yes, we are on June 13th and 14th. We're inviting all of our former classmates and uh, uh, students of ND from, oh, the mid-60s, uh, even some of the younger ones that were so immature at the time. We've got some contact information on your screen now about how to get more information and how to sign up and get tickets. Are most people sort of around this area still? Have they stayed in the region or are people really branching out? Okay, you're in Qualicum Beach, but you ventured yes. farther than that in the past 50 years. Oh, we've been around the world. We have the people in Germany and Montreal and uh, we're hoping to see people from uh, a good distance come as we've had in past reunions, our 25th, yeah. et cetera. Okay, what's it like looking at yourself so here? Okay. looking forward to it. Oh, oh look at that. So much you? fun. Yeah. Go presents Random Acts of Magic. Hey, everybody. We are here at Woodgrove Mall with... Austin. Austin, and Austin's going to help us do a little bit of a card trick with these two decks of cards. Put your finger on a deck. That one, put that one in your pocket. Good, we have another deck left. Show everyone that the cards are very random. The cards are very random. Austin, they're random? Mm -hmm. This is what we're gonna do. Just run through, just uh, touch one, any one you want. Is that to pull it out? Yeah. All right. That one? Sure. Show the camera. Make sure I can't see it. Okay, drop it back inside. There we go. So it's gone. This is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make a little bit of a prediction here. I want you to think about your card, okay? Okay, hold up your finger. Ready? Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Did you feel that? I did. <laughs> you just sent your card to me. Okay. 20. 20. It's not 20? Okay. Well, pull out that deck that you had in your pocket. Because there's 52 cards in a deck. Okay. Take them all out. I want you to count them out one at a time, face up, right here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. One more. What card did you pick? Jack of Hearts. The Jack of Hearts. There it is. <laughs> card number 20. That's awesome. Here with Austin. <laughs> Random Act of Magic. Go interactive with Kate. We are surrounded by a wide variety of art and artistic styles. This is Colleen Lucas. She's a member of Grandmothers to Grandmothers here in the Oceanside area. Why are we surrounded by all kinds of art? Because we're holding an event called Raiders of Lost Art on June 6th, and we are going to be presenting lots of art that's been donated to the public. <laughs> by the public. Yeah, by yeah, the public. Okay, and to the public if and you want to show up yeah, to the event. Yeah. Now, let's just get to it because there are so many fabulous things and I have to admit that when I heard Grandmothers to Grandmothers, I thought we were going to see a bunch of old lady art, <laughs> whatever that is, old lady art. But this stuff is fabulous. Like, what do you know where this one came from or what's the story behind that? Well, this was donated by a fellow in Qualicum who has just come back from Africa. So he's donated this up for sale. Wow. Um, yeah. So and it's got a leather frame on it. You guys are having a really hard time how to price it. We're having a hard time pricing, but we're getting there. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. now, a completely different style of art, fabric art. You have a personal connection to these. I have a personal connection to these quilts. These are quilts that I started making back in about 1990 with students in the classes that I taught. Yeah. So, um, and you're going to sell them, and that's okay with you? That's okay with me. It's time for them to move on and find a new home because they sit in the closet sometimes in my house. So yeah, it's all And you good. know the money is going for a cause the that you really care about. In fact, I donated them because they were made by grandchildren. And oh. so it was a great place to give them to the grandmothers to grandmothers. Okay, and yeah. people who don't know, that's uh, connected to the Stephen Lewis Foundation, uh, helping to support um, grandmothers in Africa whose children have died of AIDS and they're now raising their grandchildren. They're now raising their grandchildren, yeah. Okay. A Let's nonprofit organization, it's a great great organization. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, let's look at some more art. What, you've okay. got some raku? Show me a p favorite piece oh, of your pottery here. This is a beautiful piece of raku that's been donated. Wow. Yeah, yeah. 
lovely pieces that people are just giving up to us. I keep wanting to take some of these home and Colleen keeps <laughs> telling me, well, come out on June 6th and you'll just have to buy it at our fundraiser. Absolutely. What's the story? Those boys, their little heads are poking out yeah, over there. Yeah, this is a great picture. This was this was donated by one of our members and it was done by a fellow named Jose Montanez who apparently went to school with Pablo Picasso. Mm. And I guess his original paintings sell in Spain and in Europe for up to $2,000. Oh, there's something about it. Yeah. I just love it. Now you have local well-known artists just donating stacks of prints quite quite literally here. Yeah. Who's this yeah. person? This is Theo Dombrowski. So he's donated a lot of prints up for, for us as well as a really nice acrylic Good that, that he's donated, given to us. And the right. sales will all go f to the grandmothers to grandmothers. Great stuff, and we also have a piece donated by Monk. We have a bull in a china shop here, yeah. Todd, behind the camera. Careful, yeah. that was just the crystal vase, Todd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have a, we'll just... A, a piece uh, donated by, by Monk, and Ted Jolda oh. has donated some glass pieces that right. we don't have yet. So right. we're going to have a wide variety of stuff, things that have people have found in their attics, people are mm. pulling out, and some really nice, beautiful stuff that's brand new, which is great. Well, thank you for giving us a sneak peek today. Oh, you're welcome. Raiders of Lost Ark at the Best Western Bayshore. That's, that's right. That's right, on June the 6th from 10 until 4, and they are accepting artwork if you want to raid your attic or basement or closet or living room um, or grandmother's house, perhaps. Uh, you can drop those off at the Bayside on June 5th from 12 until 2. 2 o'clock. Yeah. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Let's make sure Todd didn't do too much damage over here. I think okay. the little piggy just got Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Lloyd. And I'm Swan. And we're Sino Naimo, Naimo News. News. The only radio show in the Naimo, both in English and, and Chinese. Chinese. And today we're on TV. Ah, sushi. Gesundheit. Pardon me? <laughs> I didn't sneeze. Yes, you did. You sneezed. I said, ah, sushi. Gesundheit. Stop that. We want to tell the listeners all about... Excuse me, this is TV. So? So this is called the viewers. Oh, okay. We like to tell our viewers all about the up-and-coming Sushi and Saki fundraising for CHLY Radio. At the Sushi and Japanese restaurant in Hammond Bay Plaza on May 31st from 5 to 8 p.m. With live entertainment. And? And what? Oh, brother, you missed the most important part. Oh, what? And a really nice set sushi dish with a cup of sake. That's right, all for $16. And it's all for a very good cause. Yeah, CHLY Radio. And? And what? Oh, brother, you missed the next most important part. Oh, what? The entertainment. We have a great lineup from 5 to 6, starting off with the Lao Weiss, with Ruth Anderson and Zell Dillon singing Chinese and English. Erhu. Guzhu Hai. Oh, brother. No, no. Zell will be playing the Erhu. Oh, okay. And that's right. And then we have a Jerry Burnham. Barnum. Barnum. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> Jonathan. Tickets are $16 and net proceeds go to CHRY. Tickets can be purchased at the radio station at 716-3410. And the Sushi and Japanese restaurant at 3909882. Excuse me, I have a question here. You want to go to washroom again? No. What if somebody doesn't like sushi? What? Excuse me. How can anybody not like sushi? Well, what if they just don't feel like sushi? Then there is a nice set Chinese dish and tea for them is that. So you get a sushi and sake. Or a Chinese dish and pl tea. Plus all this entertainment for only $16. To raise money for a very good cause. Yeah, keeping CHLY on the air. I'm Lloyd. And I'm Swan. And we're Sino Naimo News. Go interactive with me, Kelly. Who doesn't love kittens? And you have four of them here. Yes. This is Chris, and this is his first time fostering for the BCSPCA. Tell me a little bit about what made you want to do it and how is it? Um, well, I've, I've always wanted another cat. I have two of my own and I want another kitten, but uh, 15, 20 years, um, 
It's, it's, a, big it's a big commitment. So I thought, well, at least you can help and have temporary cats for two months, and then you can switch to more little ones. How's the experience been? It's been really, really good. It was, um, it's all free, obviously. They provide you with the food, the litter, you need dishes um, or a litter box, a carrying cage. They have everything you need. That's awesome. So these little guys are looking for homes. Yep. Don't you fall in love with them? Isn't it hard to let them go? Uh, yeah, you do fall in love with them, but um, you know they're going to go to a loving home that had more time for them, and uh, it's hard to look after four as it is, so I'm, I'm just glad they have a better home. So you would encourage people to give this a try then? Oh, definitely. definitely. All right, and the SPCA in Nanaimo is looking for lots of foster homes with mama cats and kittens. After years of restraint and then recovery, designers began redefining women's fashion in 1947. Leading the charge was Parisian Christian Dior. He and his colleagues and their work became creators of what was known as the new look. Guest curators of From Rationing to Ravishing, the transition of women's fashion from the 1940s to the 1950s, will be here at the Nanaimo Museum giving a presentation that's on June the 9th from 2 until 4. You do need to pre-register. You can do that by calling the museum 250-753-1821. And the museum is open now seven days a week from 10 until 5. And for more details on all of their programs and what you might be interested in, including cannon firings, you can go online to nanaimomuseum.ca. There's a couple of guys who, well, they might be looking for something in a museum. I'd never tell. <laughs>